Plogg's model of allocentricity and psychocentricity is one of the biggest models in travel and tourism theory. But I will admit that does sound a little bit complicated. So in today's video, I'm going to make it super simple so that you understand what Plogg was talking about and why it matters. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Hayley Stainton and I'm here to teach you all things travel and tourism. So let's start at the beginning. What is Plogg's model of allocentricity and psychocentricity. Well, Stanley Plogg's model of allocentricity and psychocentricity has been widely taught and cited for almost 50 years. And I'm guessing that you are studying this theory too, or else, why are you here? Only kidding. Fear not. If you are here to learn more about Plogg, then you will do just that. So make sure you stick around right until the end and you will be a Plogg expert. So Plogg's model is largely regarded as a cornerstone of tourism theory. In other words, it's pretty important. In fact, Plogg's model has provided foundations for many other studies throughout the past four decades. And this has helped tourism industry stakeholders to better understand what's going on and manage their tourism provision. In fact, Plogg's model was the precursor. In other words, it came before the famous theory that Butler has made, Butler's Tourism Area Life Cycle. And if you don't know what that is, make sure you check it out. Plogg wanted to examine the way in which tourism destinations develop. How do they grow? How and why do they decline? And how can we make relatively accurate predictions to help us better understand and manage the tourism provision at hand? Plogg's research found that there were or are distinct correlations between the appeal of a tourist destination to different types of tourists and the rise and fall in popularity of this destination. Essentially, Plogg delineated these types of tourists according to their personalities. He then plotted these along a continuum in a bell-shaped, normally distributed curve. And it was this curve that identified the rise and fall of destinations. You said this would be simple. I hear you, I hear you. Okay, that did sound a bit complicated. Let me simplify it. To put it simply, Plogg's theory demonstrates that the popularity of a destination will rise and fall over time depending on which types of tourists visit the destination. Okay, hopefully you get that, but that's not the full story, keep watching. To really understand this theory, let's start with a little bit of history. Why did Plogg do this research in the first place? Well, Plogg's research began back in 1967 when he worked for market research company Behaviour Science Corporations, also known as Basico. Plogg was working on a consulting project whereby he was sponsored by 16 domestic and foreign airframe manufacturers and various magazines. The intention was to examine and understand the psychology of certain segments of travellers. During this time, the commercial aviation industry was only just developing. Airlines wanted to better understand their potential customers. They wanted to turn non-flyers into flyers, and they wanted Plogg to help. This saw the birth of Plogg's research into tourism motivation that later spanned into decades of research into the subject. So why do these tourist destinations rise and fall in popularity? Well, Plogg's model of allocentricity and psychocentricity demonstrated that this does indeed happen. Essentially, Plogg suggested that as a destination grows and develops, and also declines, it attracts different types of people. Plogg pointed out that as a destination reaches a point in which it is widely popular, with a well-established image, the types of tourists will be different from those who have visited the destination before, and before it became widely developed. In other words, the mass tourism market attracts very different people from the niche and the non-mass tourism fields. And Plogg also pointed out that the area eventually loses its positioning in the tourism market. The total tourist arrivals decrease gradually over the years, and the types of tourists who are attracted will once again change. Now, there are loads of examples of this throughout the world, but I'll give you one. Let's take Goa. 20, 30 years ago, Goa was a hippie backpacker destination. There weren't that many people that went there. However, tourism then started to develop and grow and Whilst I wouldn't say, certainly with the international market, I wouldn't say that Goa is necessarily mass tourism, but it's definitely been going in that direction for some time. And there have been companies like Monarch and Thomas Cook, who no longer exist, who were offering package tours. Now, there are lots of other travel agents who are doing this nowadays, 
but they were two big names that I thought was were worth mentioning. So the people that Thomas Cook was flying out there, and I, I took one of their flights myself, were not the hippie backpackers. In fact, there were lots of sort of middle-aged, older people who were staying in a higher quality accommodation and they had more money to spend. So they're different types of tourists. They're different people. They're going to act different. They're going to want different things. Okay, so all of this has led to Plog developing a typology. Plog developed a typology that is basically a way to group people or to classify them based on certain characteristics. In this case, Plog classifies tourists based on their motivations. Plog examined traveller motivations and came up with classifications for tourists. He came up with two, allocentric and psychocentric, which were then put at extreme ends of the scale. As you can see in this diagram, psychocentric tourists are placed on the far left of the scale and allocentric tourists are placed at the far right. The idea is then that a tourist can be situated at any place along this scale. Okay, so you get that there's a scale, but we still don't know what these words mean, right? I'm going to tell you. Let's start by looking at allocentric tourists. In Plog's model of allocentricity and psychocentricity, the allocentric tourist is most likely associated with destinations that are un or under developed. These tourists might be the first tourist to visit an area. They might be the first intrepid explorers, the ones brave enough to travel into the unknown. Is it bad that I've got Frozen come to my mind as I say that? You can tell I've got two small kids. Allocentric tourists typically like adventure. They're not afraid of the unknown and they like to explore. No familiar food? Heck, let's give it a try. Nobody speaks English? I'll get by just fine with hand gestures and my translation app. No Western toilets? My thighs are as strong as steel. Allocentric tourists are often found traveling alone. They're not phased that the destination they are visiting doesn't have a chapter in their guidebook. In fact, that's what excites them. Allocentric tourists enjoy cultural tourism. They are ethical travelers and they love to learn. And research has suggested that only 4% of the population is predicted to be purely allocentric. Whilst many people do have allocentric tendencies, they're more likely to sit further along Plog's scale and be classified as near or centro allocentrics. Okay, so let's summarize some of the characteristics that are associated with allocentric tourists. Allocentric tourists commonly are independent travelers, excited by adventure, eager to learn. They like to experience the unfamiliar. They are put off by group tours, packages and mass tourism. They enjoy cultural tourism. They are ethical tourists. They enjoy a challenge. They are advocates of sustainable tourism and they enjoy embracing slow tourism. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the psychocentric tourists. In Plog's model of allocentricity and psychocentricity, psychocentric tourists are most commonly associated with areas that are well developed or even overdeveloped for tourism. Many people will have visited the area before them. It's been tried and tested. These tourists feel secure knowing that their holiday choice will provide them with the comforts and familiarities that they know and love. What is there to do on holiday? I'll find out from the rep at the welcome meeting. Want the best spot by the pool? I will get up super early and put my towel down on that sun lounger. Thirsty? Get me to the all-inclusive bar. Psychocentric tourists travel in organized groups. Their holidays are typically organized for them by their travel agent. These travelers seek the familiar. They are happy in the knowledge that their holiday resort will provide them with their home comforts. The standard activity level of psychocentric tourists is low. These tourists enjoy holiday resorts that are all inclusive. They are components of enclave tourism, meaning that these people are likely to stay put in their hotel or their resort for the majority of the duration of their holiday. These are often repeat tourists who choose to visit the same destination year on year. So, I told you I'd make this easy. Let's summarize what are the typical characteristics associated with psychocentric tourists. They enjoy familiarity. They like to have their home comforts whilst on holiday. They give preference to known brands. They travel in organized groups. They enjoy organized tours, package holidays, and all-inclusive tourism. They like to stay within their holiday resort. They typically do not experience much of the local culture. They do not learn much about the area they are visiting or people that live there. 
they often pay one flat fee to cover the majority of the holiday costs. And they are regular visitors to the same area or resort. So because Plog's model is essentially a spectrum, you don't have to be one or the other, you can sit somewhere in between. So there is also something called a mid-centric tourist. The reality is that not many tourists neatly fit into either of these allocentric or psychocentric categories, which is why Plog developed a scale. As you can see in the diagram, the largest category of tourists falls somewhere within the mid-centric category on the spectrum. Tourists can lean towards allocentric or towards psychocentric, but ultimately, most people are going to sit somewhere in the middle. Mid-centric tourists like some adventure, but also some of their home comforts. Perhaps they book their holiday themselves through dynamic packaging, but then they spend the majority of their time in their holiday resort. Or maybe they book an organized package, then they choose to break away from the crowds and explore the local area. So hopefully you are now beginning to understand how Plog's model works, and it is actually quite simple, despite the use of quite complicated sounding words. So before I finish this video, I'm just going to round up by saying what are the good things and the bad things about Plog's model. Plog's model of allocentricity and psychocentricity has been widely cited throughout the academic literature for many years. It's a cornerstone theory in travel and tourism research that has formed the basis for further research and analysis in a range of contexts. In doing this, Plog's theory has encouraged critical thinking throughout the tourism community for several decades. And it's difficult to find a textbook that doesn't pay reference to his work. However, Plog's model of allocentricity and psychocentricity is not without its critique. In fact, many academics have questioned its real-world validity over the years. Some common criticisms include the research being based on the US population, so it might not be applicable for other nations. The concepts of personality, appeal and motivation are pretty subjective terms that may be viewed differently by different people. This is exemplified when put onto the global stage with different cultural contexts too. Not all destinations will move through the curved continuum that Plog describes. In other words, not all destinations will strictly follow this path. And it is difficult to categorize people into groups. Behaviors and preferences do change over time and people change too. Things change depending on the time of the year or the day of the week. It's not always so clear cut. So there we have it, that is Plog's model. If you understand it now, do give me a big thumbs up to say that you've got it. And if you don't quite get it, let me know what your questions are and I will do my best to answer them in the comments below. And if you have found this helpful, make sure you subscribe to my channel.